that so you are um, by default muted because I thought will prevent side noises you know when uh, your mother comes in and said um, you didn't have your breakfast yet and uh, stuff like that or your phone rings so that uh, to prevent that I put it on mute and and we're almost oh one person left that's interesting um, <laughs> <laughs> First, already saw from the beginning. This is not a good class for me. Too much blabbing. Oh no, there's 23 again. Uh, listen, so um, I muted it, but it doesn't mean you can't speak. Now I want to try uh, with somebody. Maybe I can start with um, Sylvia. Are you willing to be a, a guinea pig? If you just uh, uh. hi. If you just mute it again, but then see how it works. If you press. I believe if you press the space button that you can talk. Can you try that? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So that's easy. You don't have to find the button for mute, unmute. Just the space button, that will work. Great. Um, this is the first time for me through Zoom, but you guys have tons of experience already, I'm sure, no? You've all had uh, classes before and, and, and also everything is on Zoom now. But for me, this is a, a learning curve. So we will, um, I'll try to um, work it out, the kinks. What I just uh, don't like so much about it is I always, but maybe it'll work out fine, I don't know. The thing is, um, I always like to get a bit of a, you know, a nice interaction with my students. And, um, you know, when we, at the end, we, uh, I always, luckily, am blessed that the class is, uh, becomes a real, a nice group of people, but now we're all individuals and we're all on, on, on our screen, on our own, nothing we can do about it. I just hope that um, we can just interact um, at the same level. At least just staring at your screen, you're staring at me, so I see your faces, which is, that's a good idea. No, nobody's looking away. That's good. Another thing that's different now, you know, I, I always say to my students, I, I explain that I really like eye to eye contact. So then I have an idea when I explain something that uh, I see on your faces if you're drifting away, if you're, um, if you're understanding it, if there's like a, a glance of absentee or stuff like that. And so I like to the interaction, you know, uh, if I tell a joke, if it's, if it's understood or not. Uh, so I always have your your uh, attendance for me was always five percent, and you being on on devices and and looking away and and have it looking on your phone was also part of your your finals. I can't do that now. You can't say man can't be on your device because you have to be on your device just to take this class. So this is all all out of the window. Also, um, some people take this class who cannot even make it to the class. Um, I thought Gabrielle Millman I see here, but I thought you're usually, Gabrielle, are you there? Maybe you're not on the, on the, um, yeah. on the camera yes, yet. Yes, hi. Uh, hi. Do you have a camera? Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, no, I'm not, uh, I'm on, I'm actually on the train to work, but oh, I decided okay. to go but I, I, see, yeah, I was surprised because you said normally you cannot make it on this yeah. time, right? And I was about I'm, to use you as an example, like, uh, but nice to yeah. stop you. But uh, Riel is, a, is an example, somebody who's not able to make it, usually at least, to this class, and then she'll look at the recordings. So um, even attendance doesn't count anymore, guys. So you can just stay away if you prefer to uh, see it later, if that's more convenient. Although there won't be much interactions. You cannot ask questions directly. Uh, and so I, I, I like you to be here in the class, at least have somebody to talk to and not to myself. But, uh, but so <clears throat> that is it. Um, did you all get my email, uh, my email with some of the points? Yeah. So anyone did not? Everybody got it. Uh, if you have another, as I said, another email address that you prefer me to use, then just send it to me. I would like to have your uh, phone number too, because it always happens at the end. I have to, um, to uh, give, let's say the finals, I have to submit them. And I'm sure the person sent it, but it didn't get to me because there was something wrong. And I try to reach the person, but they have a side job. And then uh, I can't reach them. And what am I going to do? I have to submit the finals, but there will be a lower number as what well if they, I couldn't integrate that. So I try to reach them. So for these, 
serious cases, I would use your phone just to see, uh, to, to let you know that I never got it and then you're alarmed. So it is for your own benefit. I will not going to sell it to any uh, marketing <laughs> places or anything. I'll just keep it for myself. Okay, nice. Um, at this point, are there any questions about the course? Once again, you can use this press, the space button and then you can ask. Nobody? Nobody? Okay. Uh, good. So, there is, um, did you have a chance to look at the syllabus? Yeah? Now the syllabus, you know what? Okay, let's, let's do that first. The syllabus has a, um, a section about paragraphs or excerpts. That is something you want me to explain. I think everybody's here now. One, two, three, four, 25 people. So um, at least anyone who subscribes can always have people who come in later, who join the class later, but this is good. So let me explain this now. There is a, a book that gives a lot of information, background information on the history of Jews in the Middle Ages. We're talking about medieval Hebrew literature. So we're talking about medieval means from the Middle Ages and Hebrew, typically those are Jewish people who write Hebrew, so always the case. Um, so the, the text that we're talking about have a lot to do with the history that the Jewish communities are in. Now, Jewish communities in the Middle Ages have largely been in two kinds of societies. One is Islamic society. We're going to talk a lot about Jews in Islamic societies, mostly Spain. Spain used to be largely Islamic for um, the total period was almost 500 years. It was a long period, not all of Spain, but and of course the territory that was under Islam changed over time. But so Islam had in these communities, the, the culture of Islam, so to say, Islamic culture, if I can say it, maybe I should say Arabic culture, whatever. I don't know what is politically correct nowadays. Sorry about that. Hope you forgive me if I say something wrong, which I will most likely now and then. But um, so, under, there was a, a lot of influence on these Jewish communities that lived under Islam, right? And then under Christian culture. Now, another a term I'd like to uh, explain to you is the difference between Christianity and Christendom. So Christianity is the religion. Christendom is a term you're going to come across. Is the culture and the societies that have evolved under Christi under. Christianity. So you can say Christian culture, Christian society is called Christendom, the world of Christianity. Okay, so the Jews of Christendom, I can't call them Christian Jews, that would be a little weird, but the Jews under Christendom, they have their own, their own influence, right? They have their own, um, uh, their own, how do you say, gestalt is, is a, maybe even a word you don't, don't all use, but their own reality and their own influences. And so those, those are the, the two main forces. So I'm trying, in this course will be almost half, a little less than uh, half the course will be about Jews under in Islamic culture and a little more than half Jews under Christian culture. Because in the end, that culture won out, at least for the Jewish community, uh, numerically, right? There's always been Jews up to today, although very marginally, Jews who live under Islamic culture, but many more who live under, so to say, Christendom, right? You now know that term, so I can use it. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. All right. Now, I was talking about the paragraphs, so this is a digression. Uh, so the paragraphs, this is a book. It's called, um, I don't even know by heart what it's called, sorry. Uh, I forget, but it's... Um, Jews under medieval uh, Christendom, something between 1,000 and 1,500. So it's about Jews who live under Christ in Christian societies between the year 1,000 and 1,500. Now, the Middle Ages, does any know when the Middle Ages start and when it ends? Does anyone know that? Who wants to give it a try? All right. 1440s. Sorry? Say it one more time. In the 1440s, 1440s. 1440s, but that would be, 
that would only be 10 years. Middle Ages is, a, is, a, is, is longer than that. 1440s is within the Middle Ages, that's correct. So when do you, you think that's when it ends? Is that what you're saying, 1440s? Is that your, your guess? No, that's not No, okay. When it, no when one else wants to give it a try? Yes, Menachem? Is that you're raising your hand? Yeah, it's from the, it's from the 5th to the 15th century, no? 15th century, that's the 1400s, like right? From, from, from the 5th. From the 5th, okay. Yeah. Now, roughly, we say from 500 to 1500. So it's a very, very big chunk of time. And of course, the Middle Ages, it's not all the same. Like time changes now, it changed then. There's a lot of transitions in that period. But what is Middle Ages between? Between what and what? What is in the middle of what? Between the classic period, when you talk about um, the Romans and the Greeks, that's uh, the classic period, right? When they're still, before Christianity takes over, so pagan classic, right? When there are still different gods and philosophers, and so before Christianity and Islam, right? And until 1500, that's when we say the modern age is starting. So we had no idea that in 1600 people were already modern, but uh, it's a flexible, modern is flexible too. But in, uh, at the end of the 1400s, around 1500, and I like to, the, to use the, the, the year 1492, that's when Columbus discovers or rediscovers, I should say, uh, America. That's when the Jews are expelled from, um, from uh, Spain. I'm gonna talk about that. That's when it's happened earlier, but the printing press is already uh, is taking, taking over. It becomes more uh, prevalent to print books instead of handwriting them. So handwritten books are called manuscripts, manually scripted, right? Handwritten. And, um, so, and, and, and with that new media of the printing press, ideas go around the world and they, you know, they, it's like the difference the, the transition between handwritten books and the internet, that's maybe even a bigger impact on society, but it's a huge impact on society. So everything changes around 1500. Okay, and, and the Catholic Church uses its monopoly because you get the Protestants who now split off from the Catholic Church and have their own ideas and their own theology. So, so many things change. Um, and then you have people who don't follow religion at all. They go back to just free flowing philosophy Okay, around 500 to 1500. Now this book, so this book is about 1000 to 1500. That's about the, from the middle to, so the second half. Now the first half of the Middle Ages um, in Christianity is not so much happening yet. That's everything, almost everything is important happens in the Islamic world. So the first half of the, not, not entirely true, but a lot of it. So. Basically, the first half of the Middle Ages is dominated culturally by the Islamic world. The second half, you could say, by the Christian world, if you want to roughly divide it in that way. So that's why we have more Islam in the first of our course, because we try to go um, in a chronological order with the topics. And, um, and this, and um, my phone, it's not supposed to ring. And, um, and the last uh, half. So that's why this book is about Jews under Christianity from 1000 to 1500. Now. That book will give you amazing insights, really helpful insights about what's happening in Spain, in Christian Spain, in the south of France, which was not France yet, which was independent countries, the north of France, which is really France, in Germany, in all these countries, England. Um, but the problem is, uh, this book has been, uh, how do you say, uh, prescribed to study by the people who studied it before me. I found it an impossible book. It is so dense, I can hardly understand that I don't think most of my students will really be able to get through it and understand it. So, I came up with a project, and this is what we're going to do. In the beginning, we do it in stages, right? Um, in the beginning, I'm going to give you each one paragraph from the book. Assign you one paragraph of the book. You can find it on my website. I'm going to show you shortly where. And you're going to read that book carefully and make sure you understand it. Now, for that purpose, you probably have to read the whole chapter in the book. So you don't have to understand everything, but you really know the chap the, that paragraph that you do. If it says, if it uses a term, let's say 
it's not going to use that term, but let's say the Inquisition took over such and such. You don't have to explain the Inquisition which is, because that's going to be already explained in the previous paragraph that somebody else does, right? But you're going to have to rewrite the paragraph in a way that you would understand it the first time if you would read it without the study. So that would be accessible for everyone who reads it. So I'm going to go over that paragraph, make uh, adjustments and show and send it back to you so you see my style that I like. You can also uh, look at it because other classes before you, previous years, have done uh, other uh, chapters. So every year we do, let's say, uh, a chapter or a chunk of a chapter, and then we culminate the book. So we make it easier accessible, yeah? And then after that, I'm gonna give you two more. Most, of, most people get three in total. It's on average a page of the book, which shouldn't be too hard, I would think. Page is very reasonable, I think. So you, you get one to try and then the rest you can do uh, the second time after you have some experience. And then I'm gonna grade that to see, because what can I grade? Um, what I can see from, from what you do is, if you understand what you read, if you're able to read and understand uh, um, like uh, scholarly books, and if you can, um, and, 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 and it's also a writing skill, right? So to make it uh, uh, understandable. So then we culminate all these chapters after the first one, I get a grade, and then you're gonna get a, uh, a book exam on a selection of these chapters of the book that I think are important for understanding this, um, for, for the background of the topic that we're going through. Is that understood? Are there any questions about that? No one has a question. I guess I really explained it well. No one? Okay. Then um, I'm going to send you, okay, let me, let's look at these, at the chapters. I'm going to uh, share this, my screen with you, if I know. And I'm gonna share the screen, and this is an image of my, uh, of my, my um, sorry, my website, shimondenhollander.com. So it's very easy, this is my first name, Shimon. Den Hollander is my last name, so I'm not Professor Hollander, but Professor Den Hollander, see that? So this is my website, <clears throat> and here you see tabs. So there's stuff about myself, there's stuff about Judaism, there's stuff about Islam a little bit, Christianity, discourses. So this is a course and there's a discourse. And uh, look, all the photos are from when I had shorter hair. That's because of the COVID pandemic. I didn't go to the hair dress, uh, cut. Okay, so here you have medieval Hebrew texts. Here you, um, you can actually go to course classes that's different, but here have all the topics that we're going to do. Everything in blue already has a link to, uh, to it. The ones in black I have to work on, but the rest um, I might upgrade it, uh, update it a bit after we uh, made, but largely this is going to be the context. So we go back and here you have a medieval Hebrew text. So that is our course. If you go to the paragraph assignment, that's what it's called. Original text, okay, let's go there. Original text with paragraph divisions. So this is the original text. If I click on the PDF, this is the whole book scanned. All right, let's, it's big, so it looks like big, so hold on one second. Yeah, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Here we go, so let's go down. And we're starting on quite, this is all done. Hold on, we worked on this. And look here, where you have the, the red, the, this is the number of the paragraph. So it's here, page 129. So the first paragraph is 129A, 129B, 129C, and here 130, this is a big one. And 131A, so this is a small one again, and B, etc. See? Now, um, we are, let's say here, this is about Italy. We're gonna skip that. I don't think it's as important. I wanna start with 129, that's chapter four, and it starts with Northern France. So that's where we, we wanna tackle this here. So 
here you can find, if I tell you, you have uh, 129A, then you can go to page 129 and look up your, um, your uh, paragraph. Is that clear so far? That's clear, right? That's easy. Okay. Going back. What else did I want to show you? Discourse, chapters, wait. Ah, paragraph assignment. The original text is here. There's an assignment explanation and guidelines for how to write. So, so about style, uh, how to use uh, capital letters, small letters, etc. Now, here you can look at the finished chapters. See, um, you, can, you can read this. You can look here about the style. Uh, you can see the style. So um, how complicated, how many hard words are, are used, etc. I would, if you go through uh, Northern France, but it would be really good for you at least before we start with Christianity, um, to, um, to, to, you know what? It would be good maybe to read chapter two. That will give you a lot of uh, background information to start with. And, uh, but we're gonna tackle this one. See, chapter four, uh, the first uh, half. Yeah? The, okay, any objections? No? Okay. So you saw the website, you know how to find it. So once again, um, there are, I'm going to uh, paste the, um, the courses. Now, if you want to, there, there was other courses. Uh, sometimes I change the course a bit. I, I drop a topic because every uh, class is a different topic. Sometimes I say, you know what, I'm going to do something new. And which is the case now. For instance, let's look here. Let's look here. Um, Abraham Ibn Ezra. I've never thought that before, but it sounds interesting, and I dropped another one. If you want to look at all the courses that I've almost, now not quite all, but you can go to Judaism and you can go to Jewish text and history. Here you have a lot of courses that I've taught in the past. If you're interested, there might be some really interesting topics that you like, right? About uh, Bible, about uh, biblical poetry, just if you're interested, just for your information, okay? So, that was it. Now I think it would be nice to introduce ourselves. So, we have enough time. Shall we look at the, at the, at the, at the topics? So, I'm going to share the screen again. Here we go. Share. This is the website. The first is, oh, this is the other website, uh, the other list. This is a total list. Let's go here, course classes. I just want to warn a few people who are very excited about the class. Not that I'm going to make it less interesting. I think not. But here, the first class is called Origins of Christian Antisemitism. And look, every religion, we are, we are here, uh, so we are here with um, Jews, Muslims, Christians, and also well, Hindus and stuff, but Hinduism, there was no, there were Jews living uh, in India, but we're not talking about that. It's not as, it would be very interesting to have a class about that, but about the Middle Ages, I'm not sure, don't think we have any written text, so it's hard to, to incorporate that. I think uh, not so much known about it uh, in the in mid Middle Ages, about Jews in India, uh, except... Well, maybe in the future I will do something that touches on it, maybe. I could do that, maybe. But as terms of Christians, Jews, and Muslims, the three monotheistic religions, um, we're all going to be somewhat maybe upset about what we hear. So nobody is the, only the good guy. So, yes, in, uh, when you speak about Jews, Jews have been a minority during throughout the Middle Ages, almost everywhere every, at every time, with a small exception, which I'm going to keep as a surprise um, for now. But so none, so so naturally, because the Jews have been being a minority for for much of the period, minorities powerless always have our sympathy. So Jews naturally come out more. Or sympathetic maybe or more like the victim so you might want to side with the Jewish that is not because Jews are inherently better in my opinion some people might differ but 
I don't think so. I think if we had been the world religion, Jews, uh, and, uh, and Christians or others would have been a minority, maybe, maybe it would be, Jews would be less sympathetic and, and, and we would side with these poor Christians or these poor Muslims. No. So brace yourself. Everyone is going to get something that they don't like to hear. Also Jews. Now, when the first class says origins of Christian anti-Semitism, naturally, that is not going to be necessarily a comfortable class for Christians. Jews under Islam is not going to be always comfortable for Muslims, right? So I just want you to know that. Um, this is not about, I'm not doing, want to be, I don't want to be nasty. I don't want to be nasty. I, that's not my goal. I just want to give... Um, background, I want to give information, and um, so please don't take it personally. That's, that's all I want to say. Um, I thought, to, uh, prepare you. I hope that the, that the first class uh, is not going to be a, a shock for Christians. That's why I'm just saying it. So, you know, this is, might be the hardest class for Christians. Then you get it, you have, then you've, 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 you've dealt with most of it, okay? Then it just gets maybe easier. The crusades is not a nice one, but you can always say, you know, that is really not my type of Christianity in the first place. So you don't have to identify with that. The first one, I think, is harder for a Christian. Alex, by the way, did you manage to figure out your, uh, your um, microphone or not yet? Didn't work out yet, is it right? No. No, okay. I thought I'd give the last shot. Good. I hope you're still uh, all excited. I think... This ends our class. I don't know what else to say, unless, of course, there are questions. I, uh, that would be good, because I don't think of everything. Anyone has a question? No? Um, I do have a question. You have a question, yes. For this course, do we have any assignments that for the next class? Um, hold on. Very good question. There is prep readers. Here we go to the discourses. We go to medieval Hebrew texts prep readers. And I click on that. See, for every class, you'll have a, a PDF. It's not too big, but you should read the PDF before the class starts. Um, I have them on almost all. This one, I have to still work, work on. And then there's a few else that I don't have, but almost every class has a, a prep reader. I call it a prep reader. Do other, how do other people call that? It's called prep reader? I don't know. But a, a preparatory, uh, a reader to prepare yourself, basically. Does that answer your question, Rabia? And is there any writing assignment along with it, or is this reading? Just a reading. No, there's no assignment right now. No. You don't have to do anything. Just, well, reading is doing something, right? But you don't have to. Um, I'm going to send you, bef hopefully before next class, the number of the paragraphs that you're going to tackle. And, uh, the, and then I'll tell you when it's due also, okay? So um, just oh, wait. Thank you. What? Thank you. Yeah, sure. And, um, and so um, I'm going to just send you everything. Um, everything's going to be posted on the website. I still don't have access to Blackboard, so I'm just using my website. And at the same time, I'm getting some visitors on my website, so that's fine for me. Okay, no other questions? Okay, good. So we'll let you go. I hope we'll see you all on Monday. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.